my name's Emerald King. I am a lecturer in Japanese and popular culture at the University of La Trobe in Melbourne. And I'm also a cosplayer, uh, MC, sometime event organizer, and I interpret for the World Cosplay Summit Finals in Japan. Today we're going to take a very brief walk through the history of cosplay and cosplay events in Australia. Now I've been cosplaying since around 2007, so while I haven't been here from the very beginning, I've been around for a while. So some of the story is from my own experience, but I also draw on information from event organisers, Australian cosplayers, and research that other scholars have conducted into popular culture in Australia and Japan. Now the cosplay community in Australia is uh, it's pretty scattered, and uh, it's really diverse. And due to the nature of this kind of video, I can't talk about every popular culture, science fiction or alternative event in Australia, but I will introduce some of the main anime related ones over the years. So, what is cosplay? At its simplest, cosplay is the act of dressing up as your favourite character from anime, manga, games, television, film, fiction and graphic novels. More recently, uh, cosplay has been used to refer to someone's OC or original character. Um, and uh, it can also be used for somebody's uh, RPG or role-playing game character as well. In Japan, uh, cosplay may also refer to dress-ups of a more adult nature. So uh, if that's the case, is cosplay just dressing up? Well, yes and no. What makes it any different to street fashion, medieval recreation or even Halloween? Well firstly, street fashion uh, like uh, Lolita or J fashion or goth or punk, it's an expression of the self, so those uh, outfits are very rarely costumes. And as for historical costuming or festivals like Halloween, what differs here is context. So in our case, one context for cosplay are events such as Supernova, Madman, Anime Festival, Oz Comic Con and Smash. But cosplayers are increasingly moving online, creating uh, photos, YouTube videos and TikToks. So a second context for cosplay is space. The convention floor, the competition stage and the lens of a camera. So let's go. Um, but first, most of my memorabilia and toys are on lockdown in my office on campus. Um, but I do have this. So, uh, let's, let's see if this works. In August uh, 1998, uh, some anime and manga clubs from three different Melbourne universities, Monash, Swinburne and Melbourne, held a joint anime screening and barbecue. The event was so successful that it was repeated over the following years, and in 2001 it, it went from a barbecue to a fully-fledged anime convention known as Manifest. In 2003, Latrobe University joined the event. Manifest would run for another 10 years before closing in 2013, and for a long time it was it was pretty much the biggest con in Australia. It wasn't the first uh, popular culture convention held in Australia. That honour likely goes to 1975's World Con or Aussie Con 1, but it was the first to focus solely on Japanese anime, manga, computer games and music. It should also be noted that in Australia and New Zealand, cosplay was still strongly identified as part of Japanese fandom culture until the mid to, uh, to late 2000s. Michaela de Bruce, who was THE New Zealand cosplay judge from around 2007 to 2015 at Armageddon, New Zealand's largest popular convention, observed that until at least 2006, most people thought cosplay meant dressing as Japanese anime characters. Writing on a group of Melbourne cosplays in 2009, Larissa Horse reported that cosplay's main attraction lay in its Japanese-ness. From these early beginnings, it is possible to see that cosplay in Australia was initially something that was inherently linked to an appreciation of Japan and Japanese popular cultures. Horse study highlights that for these fans, cosplay was a way of experiencing Japan when they might not otherwise have had the means to travel or study Japanese. 
In 2002, Manifest was joined by Avcon in Adelaide and Animania and Supernova in Sydney. Animania began in New South Wales and ran until 2014. The event expanded interstate with events in Brisbane from 2005 to 2010, Melbourne from 2006 to 2010, and Adelaide in 2009 and 2010. In 2006, the event was part of the official Australia Japan Year of Exchange. Supernova Pop Culture Expo, now Supernova Comic Con and Gaming, was originally a Sydney based con. The convention was the successor of Comic Fest, held in 2001, and it was an amalgam of four comic events held between 2000 and 2002. Like Animania, Supernova expanded to Brisbane in 2003, Melbourne and Perth in 2008, and the Gold Coast and Adelaide in 2012. Supernova and Animania managed to build multi-state empires arguably due to the fact that they followed a for-profit mo model from the beginning rather than growing from a university society. As Animania's reach declined, Supernova gradually took over. Supernova's draw card has always been its ability to bring guests from overseas, and although it started off as a comic event, it soon spread to include anime and cosplay. In 2004, Winecorn was founded in Perth, and that would run for the next 10 years. In the same year, Canberra's Anime.au started. Um, Anime.au would eventually rebrand as GammaCon in 2012. And while its focus remains on anime, GammaCon also caters to a wide range of gaming and role-playing fans. In 2005, Tasmania gained its own anime convention with Anime Island or IICon, which after 13 years uh, recently were branded as Tazpop in 2019. Across the Tasman, Dorjin Overload began in Auckland in 2006, and the event is based out of Graphic Novel Cafe in Auckland and maintains a focus on manga artists based in New Zealand and often has guests from Japan. Around the same time, New Zealand convention Armageddon started holding events in Australia. Armageddon began in 1995 as a trading card event, and it would hold events in Melbourne, Adelaide and Sydney from 2007 to 2014. In 2007, Sydney Manga and Anime Show, Smash, was formed in response to the lack of conventions based around Dorjin. And the event was modelled on Comic World held in Singapore, Hong Kong and Taiwan. Smash was the first convention to host a Japanese style uh, maid or butler cafe, in which attendees are served by cute wait staff in frilly maid style outfits or British butler suits. They were also the first convention to bring a Japanese seiyuu voice actor out as a guest. So, with cosplay and anime events now spread across the nation, the Australian scene began to emerge. In 2009, Anime News Network described the then major conventions in the following ways. Anime conventions can be compared to bands, metaphorically speaking of course. You have Wycon in Perth, which are like a pop band. Manifest are like a chamber orchestra, they're large and you know that they should sound fantastic. Adcon are the quintessential pub band. Loud, brash and fun, but you always know what you're going to get. And you're usually going to get drunk. The Anime Island Convention in Tasmania are the indie upstart, but no one knows who they are. A limited array of wigs, fabric and construction materials meant that Australian and New Zealand cosplayers had to experiment with whatever they could get their hands on. In the early 2000s, there were few commercial costumes beyond kind of child-sized Disney princess dresses and sexy Halloween nurses. Australian cosplayer and two-time World Cosplay Summit representative Asham notes that for her early costumes, we didn't even have Wonderflex, which was the thermoplastic around before Warbler. Also, living in Australia, we only had what we could get at the fabric stores here, and eBay was only starting to be a thing. Further, the physical distances between each community, let alone between Australia, New Zealand and the rest of the cosplay world, meant that distinct regional dialects and preferences have also emerged. Adelaide and Melbourne are kind of like the arty communities, sun-drenched Brisbane and Gold Coast are the good time conventions. Sydney seems to be action-packed with lots of events, while Western Australia and Tasmania are seen as separate islands, literally and figuratively, uh, remote from the centre. In the early 2010s, there were changes to the cosplay convention landscape. I noted in 2013 that many university anime clubs were finding it hard to survive as anime and manga became more accessible due to fast internet. 
I'm pleased to report that despite my pessimism seven years ago, there are still anime and manga clubs at campuses across Australia and New Zealand. As anime and manga have become more accessible, and as cosplay has become more visible, cosplay no longer simply meant made in Japan. Indeed, the current English language meaning is actually closer to the Japanese usage of any form of fancy dress. Over the past 10 years, a number of new conventions have cropped up. Some staying, like Coffs Harbour's Nexus Con, which began in 2015 as an old school anime convention, some are only lasting for a year. While some of these conventions focus on anime and manga, many are broadly focused on popular culture in general. After Manifest closed in 2013, Animaga, an anime, manga and game convention, began in 2014. The event hosts guests from East and Southeast Asia, and it also runs a maid cafe. From 2016, Madman Entertainment has held its own convention, starting with an event in Melbourne, uh, and then spreading to Perth, Brisbane and Sydney. Now Madman was founded in 1996 as an anime distributor and has been at the heart of many cosplay events since the beginning. In 2009, Madman Entertainment launched their national cosplay championship, the MNCC, and that would run for 10 years before ending at the beginning of this year. MNCC was a skit competition in which cosplayers, either solo or as a team of two, performed at three minute skits. During the event's run, it would hold preliminary rounds in Victoria, New South Wales, South Australia, WA, Queensland, Tasmania and New Zealand. The rounds were hosted by events such as Supernova, Avcon, Icon and Overload until the advent of Anifest. When asked to comment on the MNCC, Sly Ip of Madman stated, in the end, we were still the only truly national cosplay championship in Australia that focused on all sub and popular cultural aspects of Japan. It's something that we are extremely proud to have created. After MNCC moved to Madman's own convention, Supernova introduced their own national cosplay competition based on technical construction rather than skits. Supernova Cosplay Odyssey was launched in August 2018 and it's an advanced level competition with high stakes, cash prizes and a trip to America. From 2009 onwards, Australia became a fixture on the global cosplay competition circuit. In 2009, Armageddon introduced the Trans-Tasman Cosplay Cup and that event would run until 2014 with at least three of the cup winners being Australians. The competition was the first to pit Australians against New Zealand cosplayers and it threw into stark relief the fact that um, in New Zealand the, the focus was on craftsmanship and at the time in Australia it was more focused on acting and skits. In the same year Australia entered the World Cosplay Summit uh, competing against 15 other nations from Europe, Asia and North America. WCS is a week-long event filled with multiple parades and photo ops, culminating in the World Cosplay Championship, a performance-based competition in which teams of two perform two and a half minute skits. Prizes are awarded for elements such as costume and makeup, in addition to the championship itself. In 2011, Australia won the prestigious Brother Award for Best Costume. In 2019, in Australia's 10th year of participation, Kay and Widu competed in a field of 40 countries to bring home Australia's first grand prize. As of 2012, the Australian cosplay scene has also played host to a number of international conventions, uh, including Oz Comic Con. A subsidiary of New York Comic Con, OzCC brought a large-scale international event to Australia. Since 2015, OzCC has played host to the Australian Championships of Cosplay at its events. This is another technical costume competition and the winner represents Australia at the Global Crown Championships of Cosplay. Since being involved in the Global Crown Championships, billed as the biggest cosplay competition in the world, Australia has placed first uh, with Major Sam in 2016, second with Willu in 2018 and third with the Dingo Ate My Cosplay in 2019. As cosplay has become more visible at conventions, it has also been used to illustrate mainstream and geek reportage, regardless of the convention's actual focus. Or rather, cosplay of superhero characters has become more visible in the mainstream, while anime and manga remains slightly more obscure. In some ways, the centre of the cosplay world has shifted from Japan to the US. 
a report in the Daily Mail on Melbourne Oz Comic Con in 2015 claimed that cosplay had finally arrived in Australia, hot off the plane from the US, some 13 years after the first cosplay anime in Japanese popular culture convention in Australia had been held back in 2001. Remember Manifest? As the community has aged, um, but not grown up, behaviours at events have changed and improved. Over the last two decades, codes of conduct and weapons policies have been introduced, with limits on the sorts of props that can be taken to events. After the 2019 Christchurch shootings, most conventions across Australia and New Zealand have introduced bans on military and law enforcement style uniforms and on realistic weapons. Similarly, improved codes of conduct highlight the need for events to provide a safe space for all cosplayers and attendees regardless of their gender, sexuality, ethnicity, or how revealing their costume is. Events have continued to grow, change, and combine. For example, from this year onwards, when public gatherings are allowed to be held again, Animaga will run as part of Oz Comic Con. New styles of events which focus on cosplay and photography have also become increasingly popular across Europe and North America. Starting in 2019, a group of New Zealand photographers have played host to the Wellington Cosplay Photo Festival. The event is semi-structured with a number of assigned photo shoots that must be completed by photographers and cosplayers, but participants are free to add as many additional shoots as they can schedule. It will be interesting to see how social distancing and travel restrictions will affect Australia and New Zealand cosplay in the future. If you're interested in cosplay for yourself, get in touch with your local convention. Be sure to take a look at the other videos in this series brought to you by the Japan Foundation on Japanese popular culture, and have a look at the cosplays featured in this video without whose help and permission to use their images, I couldn't have done this. The research in this video is published in more detail in Aussie fans, and you can find that on Google Books or ask your local library to order you in a copy. Stay safe, wash your hands, and hey, why not have a go at cosplay?